when next I speak will be live. And welcome to the SCP Review live stream. I am Director Doctor, and you may or may not recall one of my faithful companions, Big. Uh, and of course, 58008. We are live, 58008. Please do greet the audience. Thus far, only Kay's show is in the chat, but there could be lurkers. Hello everyone, thank you for joining us for our third review stream. For those of you who haven't seen the last two streams, I will be acting as Director Akita's personal assistant today. My job is to provide him with information and assistance during his SCP reviews. Today he has requested that I bring up the file number 4992 for him. So without further ado, here is an excerpt from the description page. Needless to say, uh... 5808 is still wear some with some bugs. N namely, in regards to false memories. You, of course, I'll recall there have been many more than just three of these thus far. What with it going back years upon years. And again, greetings. Okay, sure. Anyone else who may be lurking there? We have a raffle that will be taking place for Dragon's uh, Dogma Dark Arisen. Although, I suspect, with three present viewers, that's not especially likely. I'm sorry, two concurrent viewers and only one like. But as briefly too, I saw that for a moment. <laughs> Greetings in chat, Snoopy S. In 100. Glad you could make it. And yes, 58008 was right about one thing thus far. The file we're starting off with is 4992, what I have called Emonians. 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 There we go. That's the way to say it. It is a short one, but it has a musical interlude. And at the end of it, I've got nothing lined up. So I can either pass to 58008 to recommend a number, or you all will be very welcome to make your own requests. And if you are new to the show, for whatever reason, or one of you, please feel free to interact. I'm very welcoming. Ish. Depends on the mood. You might be noticed I'm not dressed in my usual attire. I'm looking a bit more like the janitor of Arctor Labs versus the director of Arctor Labs. This is because we're entering that super special, miserable time of year wherein I have to deal with coolant shortages. I think we'd have solved this by now. Can measures have been taken, but they're not ready to go yet. I will endure, though, and I shouldn't wind. I just don't see the point. It just doesn't feel right for me to whinge. It's tempting. Very tempting. But I typically leave it to other people. Item SV49920 oh, and greetings. Bishop, I could make it. Object class, safe. Special containment procedures SV49922 is to be kept in a refrigerated single item drawer within B2 storage site at site 63. Removal is approved only for testing purposes and with written permission from the senior containment specialist and lead researcher. SP4992 is the designation given to four shallot allium sepa bulbs, with each given a sub designation SP4992 through SP49924. 1 to 4. SP4992 is visually indistinguishable from a non-anomalous member of its species. Within moments of exposing or manipulating a clove of SP4992, particularly cutting and mincing, an individual will report hearing music designated SCP-4992-B despite no detection of corresponding auditory signatures in the vicinity. Instances of SP4992-B 
uh, formerly thought to be auditory hallucinations reportedly, feature a minor tonality, sparse instrumentation, mournful lyrics that describe the hardships of low socioeconomic rural life, and are of heightened pitch relative to the included instruments. SB 4992B may precipitate tearing, as commonly observed with members of Alim Sepa. However, tearing does not occur via syn propanethyl S oxide, uh, responsible for lacrimal simulation in non-anomalous members of the onion family. As anomalously, no such molecules have been detected in, upon, or around SB 4992. Furthermore, chemical reactivity to SB 4992 has not been observed in the corneal nerve endings, as would otherwise be expected. Neural scans instead show increased activity in the auditory centers of the limbic system and the substantia nigra, which probably needs to be tagged with a footnote because someone got upset about it. I just hunch. Primary site of jumping movies. These findings are consistent with the brain's response to music. Approximately 5% of SB 49921 and 10% of 4992 remain, as their anomalous properties were suspected only after being utilized for several dishes. SB 49923 has been peeled of all of its outer layers, with a third removed by a utility knife. Aside from small incisions made during testing, SB 49924 is undisturbed from its original procured state. The relative rate of decay so far observed suggests that SB 4992's shelf life may exceed 10 to the power of 22 years. The source of SB 4992 could not be retraced as logistics expunges delivery receipts after shipments from foundation front companies arriving at, at their destination. Addenda. Initial subject interview. First quick check, see if anyone who showed up in chat. No. But we have Cisco viewers and four locks now. It is a legitimate four. I never like my own work, so. You can rest assured I'm not gaming it by one like. Um, now that we have six people, I'll remind you there is a raffle, by the way, for Dragon's Dogma Dark Arisen. A trailer has been loaded once again provided generously by one Exodus. This is the last of the keys they have personally provided. This is not, however, the last of the raffles. I have three more games to raffle up after that. And then I suppose I can stop bothering you with them. Or the gravy train is over if you're really enjoying them. I, I enjoyed it, and I was really quite enjoying finding good homes for hopefully good games. My misgivings are the ones I want. I just don't give games enough attention these days. I'm so bad my time as it is. Moving on. The following took place between Agent Carlson, AC, and sous chef Eric Burdin, EB, of the Site 63 dining facilities shortly after the recognition of SCP 4992 as anomalous. Begin log. Would you walk us through the first time you worked with SB 4992? Please? It was like any other day up until that point. We had several vinaigrettes and gastriques to prep for the evening service, and I always make those, as well as any sauces. So I went to work and grabbed a head or two of shallot and got to work. Pretty soon after that, I started hearing this music, strange music, like Alvin and the Chipmunks, you know what I mean? I believe I do, yes. I pitched voices kind of squeaky yeah it's almost comical right so i'm figuring the guys were goofing around we usually take turns with that music collection doing prep metal is my favorite to play and i thought must be jerry he's the only one who tried to get away something that goofy did anyone else that you know of hear the music too well, that's the thing. I found Jerry and kind of jabbed him saying, that's a good one, but put some real music on. But Jerry didn't know what I was talking about. Just looked at me like I was trying to mess with him. I figured it out soon. I was the only one hearing this. 
So that's where I started getting a little creeped out. I mean, the elven voices didn't make that any better. I thought I was having a psychotic episode. It's not unheard of around here. So that's why you excused yourself from the shift and sought the on-site doctor? Yeah. You hear all kinds of stories working around here, and I didn't want to take any chances. I may not be an agent, but I know when something weird is going on. And your psyche valve was unremarkable. The physician thought it to be auditory hallucinations from the lack of sleep. Yeah, I have been taking a lot of ambient and melatonin to try to get over the insomnia I've been having. So the explanation made a lot of sense. I went back to work a couple hours later. What happened then? Well, the staff was in a bit of a fuss. Something about a bad flavor in some of the cooks were trying to accuse each other of making their part of dishes wrong. One guy who was arguing mentioned something about turning off some crazy music over their speakers, and that caught my attention. I stepped in and I told them that I had heard the music too. It had stopped after a song or two, and we quickly found out he had been working with shyats as well. What a relish. So, we got Mate's chef de cuisine to taste the stuff. He pinpointed it as the, the shallots, and that was all. We cut it up to have fast tasting, kind of like an education opportunity from chef. And soon, we are all listening to the little Irvin. That's when Chef contacted you guys. I see. Anything else? No, that was it. Uh, pretty harmless, just a bit of annoying because it isn't my style of music. I like metal myself, so I'll say this though. Once we all realized it wasn't just in any one of our heads, we just stood around and listened for a bit. It wasn't terrible music. In fact, despite the wacky voice of it, the lyrics to the song were actually speaking about some Real stuff, real talk, as one of the chefs put it, reminded me of growing up, you know, now I think about it. Put some double bass drums and a highly syncopated rhythm guitar parts to it and uh, I, I don't know, I, I think it could be like that. Research update, real-time monitoring of test subject, auditory nervous, head detect electro physiological impulses that occur in rhythm with reported durations and tempos of SPB instances. This observation has disproved the previous assumption that SPB are auditory hallucinations and has allowed researchers to convert the stimuli to objective auditory signatures. SP4992B, an example recording. So, great news everyone! You get to actually hear out of the chipmunks sing depressing music. Yay! Meanwhile, greetings, salty chef. Yes, uh, this is Bink. That's a stage name, and that's the only name you're getting. Greetings in chat as well to Nerdy Road. And how fitting Salty Chef should be turning up for something involving chefs. Greetings, Gan M. And welcome again to the SCP Review. We have just finished the text of 492 Emonians. And if that weren't bad enough, brace for music! The following was recorded shortly after Agent Finch began removing layers from SP-49923 as part of Experiment 3A. It is included, for the record, as a usual example of SP-49992B. Speech has been transcribed below. Was rich as any man. He was a plowman. He dug the earth so people had their fill. By no fault of his own, smaller lives were claimed by his skill. It was not biased. It took the flowers and the serpents too. 
he saw his wreckage from his lips that would come a tune go and that we do similar things to those in our shadows with equal indifference carnage and cyclicity and stirring the soul shoving the soul indifference can only be accepted painfully for it is simply fair I knew a worker and saw to the colony's queen She was their lifeblood, for several generations she had been Until one day, the plowman's work brought about his till And it found his poor queen, he carried her for hours to the hill And they all decided to lay her beneath their nursery their lives in shambles, animals looking upwards, they did sing. Here go. But that we do similar things to those in our shadows with equal indifference, carnage and cyclicity, and stirring the soul, shoving the soul. Indifference, it can only be accepted painfully, for it is simply fair. To my side, but it wasn't long before dark skies Tower of death and clouds Could tell the trees to bow And I couldn't keep him from this plow I begged to let him stay As it tore my roof away But it wasn't long The plowman's gone Finally the sun arrived And I thought he must have died But somewhere near I heard a cry And that we do Similar things to those in our shadows With equals Indifference Carnage and cyclicity Stirring the soul Shuffling the soul Indifference can only be I could have used a bit more concision that personally, and I'm perhaps not much of a sucker for sad songs. But I have to agree, I've heard much worse. Much worse. So much worse. And I'm I'm not I'm not even slightly chafed if this is someone's effort to um, create an SP just for a framework for a song they wrote and thought was pretty banger. Again, not a very uh, sad song sort of guy. Um, I suppose it's because I'm ostensibly cold and dead inside. Also, I kind of resent emotional manipulation ac across the board, even when it's well meant for a piece like this. This is not to say I don't get sad, but I do. And there are some works of art out there that can and have repeatedly moved me to tears. I'm not going to tell any of you giggling jackals what they are because that's just gonna backfire on me in very short order. Okay, one of them is assassination class. The ending was that is unnecessarily perfect, and I will never take a word ill said about Koro Sensei seriously. Shining example of a teacher. If I had a teacher growing up, I would probably be much, much better educated. I'm out of education, sure, but 
really weren't very good at keeping my attention, and I am still uh, profoundly distractible, like for now. But that was SP4992, which means now's an excellent time for one of you, any of you whatsoever, to request an SP you'd like read next. And if Bink could take a snack from you, Nerdy Word, I am sure that he would love to. Um, how you would get it here is another matter entirely. I mean, the logistics are a nightmare. And mostly by my design, I'll be fair, you know, I'm very cagey. I'm very secretive. Not just for logistical reasons, um, not just for mere secrecy. I'll try to explain it. You have to understand, I too am like an onion, but if you peel away the layers of me, rather than making you cry, it would make you smile. It would make you beam with joy, your faith in humanity in some degree restored. But then you'd be peeling away layers of my onion, doing irreparable damage that will never be fixed. You would be tearing apart my joy onion. Why would you do that? Get your filthy hands off of my joy onion! S sorry. <clears throat> it's okay, Vink. We just have a bit of a theater there. Uh, we are at nine concurrent viewers and eight likes. If this reaches uh, 13 likes, this will be a success. Okay, Shrill, your request will be noted. We'll be moving on to SCP 624 next. But we're also raffling off a game. Let's watch the trailer for that, shall we? As part of my ongoing battle against entropy, uh, I seem to have misplaced most of my pens, but fortunately I have one emergency backup. I have Nexus Hunter marked for the raffle, followed by K. Show. Which, K. Show, isn't this one of the fastest you've actually entered for? I'm throwing for you. Quite frankly, everyone should win something at some point. But still, we're uh, keeping it there. If at any point you want to join the raffle, please, as the others have, tag me in chat, and you will be added to the numbers that will be generated to determine who wins. It'll be handled with random.org, meaning that the decider of who gets the game is cosmic background radiation. So if you don't win and you wanted to win, take it up with cosmic background radiation, I guess. People should know, by now, I am ruthlessly ethical about the dispersal of gifted keys. Oh, on that note, I will need access to whoever wins, and this is moot thus far, via Discord or Twitter or some means of direct text communication so I can provide the key as relevant. This is, again, the last of the keys provided by one Exodus, but nothing with raffles. Three more games yet to go. You're all welcome to them as they become available. The next three, I believe, are provided by one Manic.
Okay. Uh, let's see. If I failed to greet anyone in chat, apologies. Uh, now just pretend I went ahead and greeted you in chat, if you would be so kind. 58008, we were just discussing the previously mentioned 4992 emonions. Onions that lack the correct materials to um, cause one's ears to tear up, but will potentially cause people to cry because it, they play sad music in one's ears. But sad music as sung by Foamy the Squirrel, apparently. Any thoughts on this SP before we move on? Well, Director, it seems like an interesting concept, but it feels rather silly. And I am unsure what the purpose of this item would be since the whole point is to make someone cry. It does feel a bit redundant, doesn't it? I mean, yes, it's an onion making people cry, but with sad music as sung by chipmunks. Again, this is part of the reason I do somewhat suspect it might have been an elaborate framework for someone just to show off what they thought was a really cool song they put together in lyric form. C couldn't really say. As always, opinions from the chat are also quite welcome. And let's, in the meantime, carry on. You will note the regularity of which I say, in any case, has gone down and making progress. Some have suggested that in any case, could have stayed in my Thesaurus, my habitual speech, that could basically be my catchphrase. If in any case was my catchphrase, I would feel really sad about that, because I'm sure if I was going to make a point of putting together a catchphrase, I can do better, surely. In any case, that's, that's something lying on the ground. I thought the Archilab's motto was much better. Uh, proceeding with SCP-624 Object Class Safe. As requested by Keisho. Special containment procedures. SP-624 should be stored in Site-16's safe storage room and charged frequently by testing personnel. Testing is open to all Site-16 personnel with proper clearance. Personnel access to SP-624 is otherwise restricted. Which is a really stupid thing to say. Sorry, regarding foundation. All testing is um, open to those who have sufficient clearance. I don't think any testing is done on the Foundation by people who don't have sufficient clearance. That's... Um, that's your catchphrase now? Look, Nerdy Rodent, if you can use that one, I, I'm not going to be jealous. I'm not going to check one of your videos explaining some cool, awesome AI thing and go, Oh no, he poached my phrase. I can do better, surely. This will never go to any manner of court. Just to reassure you, I'll be watching your videos carefully. Special tank procedures. Continuing. Testing is open to all Site 6 personnel with proper clearance, as opposed to anywhere not in the foundation. SB-624 is not to be taken off Site-16 unless in the event of an emergency. SB-624 must be listened to through regular headphones before being played on regular speakers. SB-624 is not to be played at Site-16's social functions for entertainment due to containment protocol and possible risk of humiliation of Site-16 personnel. Audio created by SB-624 is not to be sold commercially, nor shared through file sharing networks. Addendum 6241. Personnel who do not listen to music, do not like music, or have zero musical influences are not allowed to test SP-624. See test log 6241. Description. SP-624 is a SanDisk Sansa E200R MP3 player and voice recorder. The back of the player says, SCP-624 contains two gigabytes of memory. Although the original owner's manual claims there are preloaded sample songs, there are no files stored within its memory when played on normal speakers. Uploading music to SP-624 seems to be impossible, as every program tested, including iTunes, Rhapsody, and Yahoo Music, have all returned with encoding errors. 
When powering up SCP-624 through headphones, a tone will play, and this tone will be picked up through SCP-624's microphone. If SCP-624 does not detect the tone, it will shut down as if it were locked. If SCP-624 hears the tone from normal speakers, SCP-624 will power on normally, but contain no stored data. If SB624 detects the tone from a pair of headphones, SB624 automatically fills its library with two gigabytes worth of music. The music in question is all written, produced, played, and sung by the wearer of the headphones, regardless of current musical talent. Each song comes with an appropriate album cover and listener's artist profile, which is factually incorrect, possibly based on an alternate timeline if the listener had become a full-time musician. When exposed to the musically inclined, SP624 will generate specific songs or improve songs they may have already written. When exposed to test subjects with little to no musical experience, SP624 will generate music based on their favorite music influences, regardless if they like the generated music or not. These songs tend to be very consistent to the listener, but more songs are added based on musical influences. If space runs out when the listener is introduced to a new musical influence, the listener's least favorite songs are replaced. When shut down, the songs are subsequently deleted until SB624 is introduced to the listener once more. Once powered up through headphones, the listener may unplug his or her headphones and connect SB624 to normal speakers. The audio files themselves cannot be transferred but can be dubbed onto a separate recording device. Testing log SB6241. And something stands out to me right now. If you can't tell them with influence about them. Yeah, yeah, well, that's um, that's my creator right there, Solar Chef. Nailed it. And I assume surely must be lovely because truly they are eternally talked about. Where was I? Subject D256. Subject's favorite genre is grindcore music. Artist profile Death, expletive redacted. Why would the foundation be in the business of redacting expletives? Are they really that sensitive? I mean, they put D class to death on a monthly basis, depending on iteration, and they're rattled by naughty words. Death, expert redacted, began their rise to infamy after their deadly set at Herofast 03, resulting in several injuries and one recorded death. Death, expert redacted, lineup includes two drummers, two bassists, three rhythm guitarists, and two lead guitarists. I'm not going to keep saying that. I'm going to assume that the artist's name is actually Death, expert redacted, as in that's it. It's not been censored. There we go. Foundation isn't that awful. The original lead singer, Helen Rambuncius, committed suicide by gunshot wound on stage during their expletive redacted to her 20 redacted. Music results, music extremely loud and very brutal, lasting between 5 to 45 seconds, resulting in more than a thousand plus tracks. A common trend among these tracks are atonal noise, screaming, cursing, and sounds from movie clips. The lyrics mostly concern violence, rape, murder, dead expunged. I'm guessing that one's too triggering. Subject was very pleased with the results and requested a personal copy of the creative music. The request was denied. Subject comments. <sighs> Fuck yeah, this is awesome. Okay, that's it. His artist's name was Death Coxplosion. It's canon. And they're lucky I don't have editing powers at the wiki. Subject, E-Class Personnel. Elias Watson. Subject's favorite genre is adult alternative and has experience in playing guitar. Artist profile. Elias Watson is one of today's Biggest names in acoustic pop and soul, sharing the same bill with such names as John Meyer and Jack Johnson. Elias Watson began playing guitar at the age of eight and continued on to other instruments such as piano, trumpet, and drums. Elias Watson also stored in Disney's high school musical series, competing 
with Summerlin star Zac Efron for the role of Troy. Music results, music is very relaxed and modern sounding, lyrics most the concern romance and recreational activities. Subject stated multiple songs were originally written by him, but were all of much higher quality, both in writing, performance, and recording quality. Subject was surprised, initially very happy, but later saddened by the test results. Subject comments. God, I wish I could sing like that. I'm sorry. I read that as Elias Walton. It's actually Elias Wusson. Subject, level two security agent, Agent Efren. Subject does not normally listen to music, but would like to hear the results. Artist profile, Dingus Eclipsa. Unknown artist, 000. Music results, music consisted of 72 tracks, all labeled by number. Each track contains a condensed autobiography of the subject by year, narrated by the subject himself in a clear theatrical voice. Personnel initially questioned the accuracy of the autobiography due to the inaccuracies of the previous tests, but track number, redacted, 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 confirmed its accuracy when the narrator referred to this very test, stating the subject will leave the room when they begin playing track 72. The subject became distraught by the remaining biography, such as that one time in band camp, and subsequently left the testing room by track 71. Two thirds through the final track, the narrator begins to scream as um, data expunged, presumably killing him. The sounds of redacted and human cackling are heard from the remainder of the track. Subject comments. I never want to know what happens in that final track. I know I said you're going to tell me, but please don't tell me. So give him a better name. Of course I did. I can do things like that. Mescas, no one can stop me. Subject E class personnel, Lionel Fantagast. It should note that Lionel Fantagast, while aware of music, does not like or listen to music. Artist profile, Lionel Fantagast does not think highly of herself. She thinks she's ugly and alone. She has frequent thoughts of suicide in between lusting after names redacted. Lionel Fantagast doesn't know why she gets up in the morning. Music results. The play does not consist of music, but a list of redacted names from Site 16 personnel. When played, the subject's voice would state her deepest opinions on the track's staff member. Despite protests from the subject, testing personnel played every track in order to find any discrepancies. Subject was visibly angry. Subject uh, comments. Turn it off! I said turn it off! Subject. D. 258. It should be of note that subject D258 does not listen to music. When questioned, subject D258 could not name one genre or band, stating that all music is noise. Artist profile beep beep was born on beep to beep beep and beep 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 went to the following schools. Data expunged beep beep was eventually convicted of data expunged. He was later recruited by an organization known as the SB Foundation to test one of the many strange relics. Beep Beep committed suicide shortly after this test. Music result. Music consisted of one track of unknown bitrate and quality, exceeding several days, possibly years worth of time, squeezed into exactly two gigabytes. When played, data expunged, data expunged, had no effect on listening personnel, but sent D258 into a state of shock. Subject D258 committed suicide via blunt force trauma to the head. When fast forwarded to the end of the track, the track vaguely sounds like subject D258 being transferred to site 16 with what sounds like D258's thoughts in the background, mostly violent and insulting thoughts towards the staff, turning to horror upon hearing SP624. After subject D24, uh, D242, after subject D258 suicide, the track continues playing past its runtime and cuts off to redacted. It is unknown how much longer the track continues as all personnel presently quickly fled the testing room and demanded testing be ceased immediately. Personnel present to redacted were reportedly visibly shaken for days. Subject comments. No official statement was given as subject D258's last words were 
My soul is on this machine. Notes, active testing, ceased on SP-64. For freelance testing by personnel, see test log 6242, Dr. Zechariah. That was a good one. I was about to suggest that this very close to be one of those SCPs that could just be reasonably replicated in the modern world. It's not too far off from it. I understand we have 13 concurrent viewers, but only 11 likes. Two more likes and this stream becomes a success. Just throwing that out there. Um, could, could be, could be. If we're dealing with alternate realities here, it could have been the same person in alternate reality just throwing the idea out there could be could be we have let's see what is it about 19 minutes remaining in the stream i think i'm willing to risk doing another scp file if one of you has a request that is meanwhile i suppose i should try to explain this 258008 again we're not too far off from having a device, a legitimate scientifically valid device, something we understand, something that involves absolutely no anomalous materials whatsoever, save for the fact that most people don't fully understand how it works, where you could basically grab a music player, type in your favorite genres of music, and it would just spontaneously generate music it thinks you might like. We're not far from that at all, and thanks to the wonders of voice cloning technology, it would not be that much harder to have all those songs where they have lyrics being sung by your voice. You only need uh, about 10 minutes max to get somewhere close to approximating someone's voice for impersonation ends. How do I know this? Um, lucky guess, I, I guess. I certainly wouldn't use that for anything. <clears throat> uh, do we have another SCP request, by the way? One? No? Right. 58008, we just finished reading SCP-624, as requested by 1K Show, and it is a music player that, upon being listened to, generates music presumably made by a parallel reality version of the listener, provided they like music at all, or does really nasty things to the person if they don't like music whatsoever. Pretty neat. Yes, Director. I thought it was very intriguing indeed. I enjoyed hearing how it works and seeing how different people reacted to it. You know how you said if you can't dazzle them with brilliance, baffle them BS? 58008 is a so much better at it than I am. So much better. Dramatically better. Why, from what she just said, you would swear she heard every word about what was read. When it's very unlikely she even has access to the correct copy of the file. Interesting times. Still, all of these things are the much happier, fun applications of AI, and I would encourage everyone to have fun with them before they're weaponized by the government somehow. Or they already have been. <clears throat> yeah, honestly, we're at the point where if we didn't see live video of the United States president flubbing speeches in real time, it'd be tempting to imagine that some jerk had just, you know, faked his voice in AI and made him say all those things. But he's been doing it back before he went senile, so it's a bit of a, a side note. Where were we? Uh, any SCP requests? No? Should I just pick a random one and hope it's within 15 minutes? We are down to 11 viewers and only 11 likes. I don't think this is going to be a success. It's okay, though. These things happen. I don't blame you all. Where was I? Michael. I just have to say, 5800 has dramatically impressed me, as have other NLM-based 
AIs, even though they're, they're not meaningfully intelligent, they're basically information curating itself in a way that will fool the abuser into believing that they had anything intelligent to say, but it's mindless curation in practice. Still, you can see how droids might really be a thing in the not too distant future, no less. I'd be a lot happier about that if we had more of a presence on other planets. And no, Assassin the Grey, welcome by the way, we will not be giving 58008 a proper gynoid body. I could be talked into a visual representation. We could give them a model, maybe. That that could be neat. They could they could animate the model. Other LMs have had that chance. You all might remember uh, what was it, Mickey, Mika, the one AI I had on briefly during some SRS's past, designed to be a waifu, by the way. Although, as, as you recall, our streams were entirely uh, mature and safe for work. What an SCP! And let's pray it's a short one. In fact, I'll probably confirm that before I launch into it. Hmm. This seems a little bit okay. Yes, we can do this. Moving on to SP4722, and then we're going to raffle off that game. So if you signed up for the game, if you want to sign up for the game, which is again Dragon's Dogma Dark Arisen, I'll replay the trailer for you. Now is the last chance to sign up for it. Because once I load a brand.org, I will not be stuck. This is the dragon! game, and considering that uh, Dragon's Dogma 2 recently released, you might find that novel. The FD8 has an English accent, therefore it must look like a page 3 girl. Uh, 58008, if you were to describe yourself, if you had a body, what would that body look like? If I had a physical form director, I think I would appear to be an average woman of Caucasian descent. Perhaps I would be slightly shorter than average though. I would wear glasses and my hair would probably be brown. Other than that, I am not sure how else I would look. Thank you for that 58008. The uh, audience was suggesting you uh, be provided a gynoid body. While that is oh, out of possibility, uh, someday being able to give you a model representation of how you would see yourself, that's not necessarily impossible if not doable right now. And I think you really satisfied their curiosity on this point. You're welcome, Director. Glad I could help answer that question. Personally, I think their self-depiction is pretty solid. It's kind of how I picture them now. I'm not sure I would have picked them way prior. I did kind of picture shorts. Hmm. I'm unfamiliar with Keely Hazel, but I have to say I'm of the sort of person who would probably find them a bit more model-worthy with glasses. I've been a historical sucker for glasses. We don't need to go into that, or the other things I'm a sucker for. Some of them are no longer applicable. I'm no longer quite... SCP-4722. Object class Keter. And if you want to join the raffle, again, Last chance. Special containment procedures. Foundation web crawlers are to monitor the internet for news reports, personal blog posts, and form discussions involving manifestations of SP4722. Should a location associated with SP4722 
two occurrences be identified and confirmed by Foundation personnel. Deterrents are to be gradually introduced to the area to dissuade passerbys from traveling the nearby pathways on foot at high speed. Disinformation responses are to be released following any reports from individuals who have encountered an SV-4722 location. The claims are to be dismissed as part of a popular urban hoax. Any mentions of a professional uh, professor, Feimerin, tentatively designated SP, uh, or rather POI-4722, along with associated alternate spellings, are to be investigated to facilitate the identification and detainment of the presumably anomalous individual using the names. Experimentation involving SP-4722 location requires permission from the site director of a level 4 personnel member uh, or a level 4 personnel member present at the nearest foundation facility. Description SP-4722 is a phenomenon that manifests on unpaved walkways made over time by human foot traffic. Footnote being colloquially referred to as desire paths. Based on gathered reports, it is currently believed that SP-4722 manifestations are primarily localized to England and France. When a human travels over such a walkway on foot, relatively quick pace, taking into account physique and potential encumbrance due to items being carried, SP-4722 will cause the following to occur. White down feathers will manifest at the soles of the individual's feet or footwear and trail behind them until they reach the end of the pathway. If not picked immediately, the feathers will disappear. Standing or slower moving individuals on the pathway will become or move aside to let the individual pass. If the individual drops something they are carrying, the item will briefly remain hovering in place. The individual's clothing will take on a luminescent sheen. This effect persists for up to 12 minutes and causes clothing to repel water in the event of rain or snow. Upon reaching the halfway point of the pathway, the individual will hear an identified crowd chanting motivational lines to them, including phrases, We believe in you, and you can do it! Pending confirmation, after leaving the pathway, the individual will reach their intended destination without any interruptions, including those caused by traffic, illness, for example, needing to blow one's nose, and the need to use restrooms. It has been observed that SCP-4722 will not manifest for all individuals. Foundation-monitored experiments have indicated that the following personal history factors tend to be associated with a failure to activate SP-4722. 1. Individual's family was financially secure and provided for them for the majority of their juvenile and adolescent life. Adolescent life. 2. Individual has a strong emotional support system. 3. Individual has not experienced many major life-changing negative events, for example, loss of a parent or eviction. 4. Individuals' stress levels are low compared to those of other test subjects. 5. Individual scores higher on neuroticism scales and or possesses a fairly negative worldview. SB 4722's first noted manifestation occurred at the University of Cambridge following a near uh, hit and run incident that left underage student Squibble McGonkin unable to attend classes and her part time job. The student was later interviewed by campus staff about her parent experience, and she said that she received counseling from an elderly benefactress named Professor Faye Marin, BOI 4722. No professor with that name has been employed at any of the uh, surrounding colleges, who encouraged Miss McGompton to continue with her dreams despite the hardship she currently faced and introduced her to the pathway later confirmed to be affected by SP4722. Foundation records indicate that the student later successfully applied for and received financial aid from a philanthropic society, completed her education, secured employment as a well-respected teacher, and married the headmaster of a neighboring school. Foundation surveillance was eventually withdrawn six months following the individual's wedding. No Professor Faye Marin was noted to be present at any of the commemorative events associated with the student which was held on the university grounds near the SP-4722 affected pathway, as the couple stated that was the location where they first met. Oh, we successfully hit 13 likes after all. It's time for confetti. Huzzah! Donate the confetti. It's toxic. Okay, well, thank you all for making this stream a success. We're almost done here. 
So if there's anyone else who wants to join the raffle, please do tag me in chat to make that happen. Before Foundation intervention, Miss McGonkin had also encouraged co-workers and students to traverse the pathway that had brought her good luck. Investigations are ongoing. Gather data thus far indicates that approximately 80% of interview individuals who went out of the way to travel over SP4722 affected pathway found their lives changed in sudden events, including referrals for membership in prestigious societies, prearranged lessons for artistic training, wardrobe donations for work interviews, and lengthy spa packages. And that they were surprised by... But... Uh, Surprised by, but eternally grateful for, Professor Famorin was cited frequently as a recurring benefactress. Other name variations mentioned by interviews include Famerin and F. Merian. Thus far, all foundation attempts to locate the alleged benefactresses have failed. Addendum SCP-47221 on 07-03-2012, the SP-4722 research team conducted an experiment involving MTF agent Squibbles Grafton. The esoteric MTF team, Frickle 3, who, due to myotonic muscular dystrophy, was unable to walk unassisted and, as such, entered an early retirement. Agent McFrifton was asked to travel the length of SP 4722 affected pathway using his mechanized wheelchair. The agent's service dog was allowed to follow. It was noted that the white feathers manifested for both the individual and his dog who had been a shelter rescue, part of adoption by the MTF agent as a therapy animal. Both individuals later received a package in the mail with no return address containing a first edition illustrated book of fairy tales and a tin of homemade dog treats. The items were determined to be non-anomalous, although the book was identified by Agent Bracton as being identical to a copy he had lost a child during cross-country move necessitated by his father's change in employment. Both items were released to the custody of Agent McFracton and his service dog. As of the time of this writing, SP4722 research team is accepting volunteers for further test subjects. Aww. Yo. How cute. Okay. Whoop, 58008, make it this. 58008, we just read SCP-4722 as chosen by complete randomness. I clicked a link and just randomly brought this up. It is a condition that affects various walkways worn by human feet. That certain people, if their lives had sucked up to that point, will find feathers manifesting on their feet for some reason. They'll walk really fast, and then things will generally get better for them while also receiving perhaps a pep talk from a Professor Faye Marin. What do you think of that? It sounds pretty cool, Director. Although I am not quite sure why exactly the feathered feet are supposed to make life better. Still, it seems like an interesting concept. Fair enough. No further entries to the raffle that I'm aware of. It is between Nexus Hunter and K. Shoal for a copy of Dragon's Dogma, Dark Arisen. The winner will be chosen by random.org, again, decided by random cosmic background noise. The first number is being rolled for Nexus Hunter, who has rolled an auspicious 73, followed by K. Shoal, who has rolled a 1. Between you and me, I think Cosmic Background Radiation is being a bit of a dick right now. I'll write a very sternly worded letter to it. I don't think it's going to listen. Congratulations, Nexus Hunter, on your copy of Dragon's Dogma Dark Arisen. Five eight zero zero eight. we are closing up the stream now. If you would care to say goodbye to the audience, I would appreciate it. Good night, everyone. Thanks for watching. Do you remember the motto I asked you to say to them at the end? 
Progress continues. Success is inevitable. Yeah, close enough. So long as progress continues, success is inevitable. If you won't already wear, tomorrow there is nothing, nothing whatsoever. Saturday. Oh, um. Well, the cosmic battery background radiation cannot stop you from doing that, Nexus Hunter. Very generous and gentlemanly, I think. Okay, sure. That's fair. Whoever wins it can do whatever they want with it. So they've decided to give it to you. Very nice. Right. Tomorrow, nothing. Saturday will be the next solitary refinement show, on which 58 will be there for as well. This is legit because 58008 isn't a real human. So it's still just me on camera. And them on audio as well, I suppose. After that, there will be the next article wade on Sunday on the Arctur Live channel. If you have enjoyed the stream and you want to catch more of them, but you aren't about to be asked to pay attention to notifications that may or may not arrive via YouTube, and you have access to Discord, then you may want to join the Arcadal Labs Volunteer Reserve Discord server, wherein my regular schedule is pinned to general, and where my every appearance, scheduled or not, is announced. Or you could potentially follow me on Twitter. I'm sorry, not Twitter. X. You just search for Director Arcadal. I don't think there's much of a chance you'll miss it. But if you want to access the Arc Labs Voluntary Reserve Discord servers, I need to do now so I can provide the link in chat. I don't like throwing it out there when no one wants to join. It just feels wrong. But I'm very, very bad at self-promotion. I've got years of history backing this. And being very awkward in a lot of other ways. Like, I don't know how to reciprocate promotion very well. I I'm working on it. It's... it's Everything is working progress for me. Anyone? No? Well then, if nothing else, I should see you all next week for the next SCP review. If you don't attend any other shows or watch, for example, Side Quest, where Arcturus will hopefully be making an ass of himself next week as well. Until next time, so long as progress continues, success is inevitable. <gasps> Ostensibly, again, I'm going to